Hi friends, welcome back to another Read Aloud lesson with me, Mr. Core. I hope you guys are all being safe at home this week, and I hope you guys are um, continuing to practice your independent reading at home. Before we get started, I'm sending everyone a virtual high five um, right now, um, and let you guys know that I still miss you all, even though I speak to some of you during the week. This upcoming, during this week, I will be reaching out um, to families who I have not heard from um, majority of the time versus um, my friends that I hear from almost every day. So thank you guys for still reaching out to me, whether you have any questions or any comments about the work. Keep it up um, and let's continue. For today's lesson, you're going to be needing a pen or pencil, a blank sheet of paper, your listening ears for today's read aloud, along with your story nonfiction worksheet. Go ahead and stop the video, get your materials, and come right back. All right, now that you're back, your thinking job for today's lesson will be, what are, we, um, what are you learning about this topic? Two, what other real world connections can I make from this text? And three, why is the title a good one for this text? Those are your three thinking jobs I want you guys to keep in mind as we are reading. For today's text, the uh, link to the, to the text itself can be found um, in the forms area or in teams where you saw the outline for this lesson. Today's text is called Space Food. Let's get started with our caption. I don't know why I'm pausing so much. I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> All right, let's jump into our text. Caption. Life in space is very different from life on Earth. When people living in space need to eat, it's a different experience than when you eat. In this informational text, Barbara Radner describes how astronauts take food into space. As you read, take notes on what kinds of foods astronauts eat in space. All right, so from our caption, we know that we're gonna be dealing with life in space and how it's very different than life on Earth. I'm gonna go ahead and Highlight that one a bit. Next up, the text is letting us know, as you read, take notes on what kinds of food astronauts eat in space. So just like how we stop and jot, when you are reading this text, you are to stop and jot these notes as well. What kinds of food astronauts eat in space? Let's jump into our text to continue to learn more about space foods. You really know how important a clean kitchen is if you live in the same small space for weeks. Hmm, that sounds like quarantine a bit. <laughs> Everyone needs to have a clean kitchen so they are healthy. A dirty kitchen can make people sick. Astronauts are people who travel on spaceships. They need to have a very clean home. They live far from Earth. We need clean kitchens everywhere on Earth and in space. Up paragraph one lets us know what an astronaut is, just in case if we, do, we did not know what an astronaut is. Astronauts have two problems, how to get food and how to keep their spaceships clean. They need to solve them in order to stay alive. They are in a spacecraft far from Earth and need to take care of everything themselves. They need to be sure they have what they need to live there because the astronauts may be in space for weeks. All right, so from paragraph two, we have two problems that we need to solve. The first one is how to get food and how to keep their spaceship clean. Paragraph two is letting us know more information. We have some problems that we need to solve. We have our two problems. Let's read to find the solution to these two problems. Here is how they solved the food problem. Oh, first problem is being solved. 
At first, the astronauts took tubes of food with them into space. They would squeeze a tube and eat semi-liquid food. It did not taste great. But since they did not since they did not need to take dishes or silverware with them, they had no dishes to wash. That sounds kind of good. No dishes to wash. Today's spaceships have a bigger menu. Astronauts can eat from bowls. In fact, they take cereal and other standard foods with them. The foods are packaged in special containers to keep them fresh. They use knives, forks, and spoons. One unusual item on their table is a pair of scissors. They use the scissors to open the food packages. They can eat right from the package. It's kind of neat. They have a kitchen on the spaceship. Its oven can heat food to 170 degrees. The kitchen has water and sets of meals that come on trays. The astronauts choose their menu before they go into space. They take a lot of food with them. Hmm. This area sounds as if they're meal prepping. The astronauts keep bread and fresh fruits and vegetables in a special food locker. Most flights take tortillas. They package the tortillas in an oxygen-free wrap so they stay safe. All right, so we just got to the end of this paragraph where we're at paragraph six, and we were able to find our answers as to how the food problem um, problem is solved. Now, by then, you should have, I did not highlight it for you guys because I want you guys to find this on your own and to give me the answer later on. But now we're going to move into our second question. How do they keep the kitchen clean? Let's read to find out. They do not have to worry about mice or other rodents. Ooh, that's good. They make sure that there are no rodents before the ship leaves, but sometimes mice travel on the ship. Those mice are part of experiments. They live in cages. How do astronauts keep their trays clean? Hmm. That is another health problem that astronauts solve. They need to stay healthy in space. To carry a lot of water to wash trays would be a lot of extra weight. They pack wet wipes in plastic bags. They use them, they use them to clean trays so their kitchen is clean and they stay healthy. All right, so that was our first read for this text. Friends, when you read this text, it will not be highlighted, but I want you guys to still continue to take notes and um, jot down and underline those important details. From our last text uh, about Jonathan last week, you guys mentioned to me that you guys enjoyed watching the video or having a video attached to the lesson. So this week I was able to find another video attached to, um, att to, attach to this lesson, all about space foods. We're gonna watch the video together and then we're going to jump back into the lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and watch the video. What's going on? Doo -doo. I don't know why I just did that, but I did. <laughs> Liberty Mutual, take 96. Liberty Mutual. Cut. A Liberty Mutual. Cut. What's the line? So this is Node 2. This is a really cool module. Um, of course, most of these modules you'll see, they have four sides uh, and they're put together. That way we could sort of work on a flat plane, either a wall, a floor, another wall, or the ceiling. But, you know, again, all you have to do is turn yourself and your reference changes. The reason I'm bringing that up is because this is where four out of six of us sleep. And so people always ask about sleeping in space. Do you lie down? Are you in a bed? Um, not really, because it doesn't matter. You don't really have the sensation of lying down. You just sit in your sleeping bag. So here's one sleep station right here. I'm going in right now. You can follow me if you want. So I'm inside. 
it's sort of like a little phone booth, um, but it's pretty comfy. I've got a sleeping bag right here that we sleep in, so we don't have a, sort of like a little bit of a cover. We don't fly all over the place. Um, but, you know, you can sleep in any orientation. I have it sleeping, feeling like I'm standing up right now, but like you saw, I'm on the floor. But it doesn't matter if I turn over and I sleep upside down. I can't have it. I don't have any sensation in my head that tells me that I'm upside down. So it really doesn't matter. The sleep station is also like a little office. I think if I was in a sleep station like that, I would be panicking every five seconds because I don't know how my body would be oriented. Would I be up, down, all over the place? I don't know. All right, let's get back to the video. We've got a computer in here. As you can see, we've got a couple little toys. I've got some books. I've got some clothes and other things that make it sort of like home. I'm coming out. And just for reference, that's one sleep station. This one's another right here. There's one on the ceiling, if you want to call it, right here. And then there's a fourth on the other wall over here. So all of us sleep in a little bit of a, a circle. All right, come on back. There's more to show you. I know that there's some questions about how to use the bathroom and how do you actually live in space like normal. Like at home, I mentioned real quickly about getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth and washing your face. Okay, this living in space in the bathroom should be interesting. Well, how do you do that? Well, here is the bathroom, essentially. You get up in the morning, and we have a little kit, and it has all the essential things that you need, like your toothbrush and toothpaste and brush. See how, see how much better the brush makes my hair look? <laughs> I'm just joking. It still stands up straight. It doesn't matter where you are. It's always going to stand up straight while you're up in space. A lot of people ask about toothbrush and toothpaste. So luckily enough, toothpaste, you can do it upside right this way, is sticky. And so it sticks to your toothbrush. No problem. Another cool thing is that water sticks to your toothbrush too. If you can see it. I'll have some water come out. Water is pretty neat up in space. It'll stick to Just look at that droplet floating away. Here's a toothbrush, and it will make a, whoop, a big bubble. And that's just by surface tension. And then you can drink it. So a lot of people ask about what do you do with the toothpaste after you brush your teeth. Two options. Swallow it, and it's sort of like mouthwash. But it tastes a little gross. Or you can just spit it out in a paper towel and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay, friends, how many time, times have you swallowed your your, um, your toothpaste and everything after you've done, you know, brushing? Let's be honest, we've all done it once or twice before, but let's continue. <laughs> Swallowing thing I wouldn't recommend at home. I'm only up here for four months, so it's not that bad. <laughs> One of the most pressing questions about using being living in space, of course, is the bathroom. So let's take a look at that little piece of work. Come on in. Here we are at the throne. This is awesome. You might see the little, um, you might have noticed the little moon on the outside. This is our orbital outhouse right here. And of course, 
by the way, an outhouse is the bathroom. It serves for two functions. Number two, right here. I'll show you. But you see it's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim. And you'll be, be ready to make sure things get let go the right direction. And it smells a little bit, so I'm closing it up. And that's, of course, for number two. And this guy right here is for number one. So they're sort of two slightly separate functions, but you can do a little, essentially both, by hanging on right here and doing number one and number two. I might add it's color-coded, so you really don't get it mixed up, which is nice. This is yellows for number one. <laughs> and uh, also, there's a selection of paper. People always ask about toilet paper. What do you do with toilet paper? What kind of toilet paper do you have? We have gloves just because sometimes it does get messy. We have some Russian wipes, which are a little bit coarse if you like the coarse type of toilet paper. We have some nice tissues, which are nice and soft if you like soft toilet paper. We have huggies um, just for any cleanup. You know, we were all babies once, and this sort of helps. And then as things get really out of control, we have uh, disinfectant wipes just to make sure we clean up here. Because, you know, just like the water... I showed you the number one stuff can sort of go all over the place if you don't aim correctly. And did I mention both of these have a little bit of suction, so they should keep things going in the right direction. But um, like I said, sometimes things get a little out of control if you are out of control yourself flying around. So we have lots of protective stuff. And of course, you do have your privacy. There's a little door. So other people know that you're in there. Here's a pretty cool place. This is sort of like in your house where everybody meets in the morning. Uh, after you wash your face, brush your teeth, you want to find something for breakfast. And this is our kitchen. You might notice there's all sorts of foods here. Uh, it's like opening the refrigerator. You got all your different stuff that you want to have. Drinks, meats, eggs, vegetables, cereals, uh, bread, uh, snacks. And that's a good place. That's where you find all the candy. Uh, side dishes and then some little power bars just in case so we have all this type of food some of it is dehydrated and so we have to hydrate it fill it up with water some of it is already made and then all we have to do is heat it up so something like this i'm pulling out barbecued beef brisket pretty yummy not only is this food made in the u.s but we also have food here from Japan. Uh, we've got Russian food. As you can see, all these red containers are filled with food that's from Russia. Um, and then we get some of our specialty stuff, some things that we like, some of our favorite stuff that your family can send up. In fact, I like fluffernutters, and so I got sent up some fluff so I could make my fluffernutter with peanut butter. So you have a lot of food up here. Your business idea needs a website, so go to Wix.com. I know what you're thinking. Another wick. Here, no problems. No, I want to say where we are. So right now, we're in the Japanese laboratory. It's one laboratory out of many here on the International Space Station. It's actually on the left-hand side. If I was International Space Station and I was flying through space like this, my left hand would be where the Japanese laboratory is. So now again, we're on the right-hand side, all the way on the right of the International Space Station. This is Columbus, the European module. It has science experiments all over. You can see it looks a little bit crowded. And here we do a lot of our medical experiments. Here we are in the U.S. laboratory. Again, this is a laboratory with science experience on all of the walls here, all sorts of stuff that we do. Um, and one of the things we also do is we exercise. We have some exercise equipment on board the space station. Um, we need to do that because we lose bone density and muscle mass while we're up here, and that's a result of not having to fight against gravity. So how we keep ourselves in shape are with a bike, a treadmill, and a weightlifting machine. This is the bike. You notice the clip pedals. So all you need to do is actually clip your feet in, and then you can start pedaling. You don't need a seat. 
because you don't sit down. Actually, I haven't sat down for six months now, so you don't need any any type of seat. Just make sure you're you're held in with your pedals. You probably see that the bike bounces around a little bit as I move it. It's not steady and held to the wall firmly, and the reason for that is. The space station is pretty big. You saw that there's also solar arrays on the space station. If we start putting any forces into the space station, it's going to make those solar arrays bounce around a little bit. So to prevent that, the machines bounce around a little bit, move around a little bit. And that way we don't put any forces onto the structure of the spacecraft out to the solar arrays. All right, a little farther on. Come on. I'm here with my two buddies uh, in the airlock. Actually, these are two spacesuits uh, that are ready, primed up to go outside, as we call it, to go do a spacewalk in case we have to do anything outside. Some of the things we do outside are just like inside repairs. We have a lot of um, electrical boxes and machinery and solar arrays, in fact, that I talked about earlier, that are outside, and sometimes they don't work quite right. Um, remember, space is really cold and really hot, and it's also the vacuum of space with no pressure and so some of the equipment doesn't work well all the time so we might have to go all right so i'm gonna cancel this and if you need to um watch any more videos you can just go log on to youtube and just google um on youtube life in space or even space foods to find out some more information all right, so let's jump back in. I will jump back into the text really briefly um, because after reading, I forgot to share some stuff with you guys. So after reading, um, I did make some real world connections um, where it says, your thinking job, what are, other, what are other real world connections can I make from this text? I did make some from reading the text uh, and I jotted down that astronauts need to keep their home away from home clean, just like we have to keep our homes super clean, especially now during this pandemic. Um, and I also jotted down that the author describes two problems that astronauts have in space, and then he goes into details about how to solve them. And that's also something that we found as we read the text. All right, so that's it for my text talk. <laughs> All right, for your work that is due uh, by the end of Friday, using both text and the video, answer the following questions. One, what are three things you learned, three facts you learned? Two, what are two questions I still have? Three, what is one thing you found interesting? So you're gonna fill, out, fill this out on our forms, in our forms via Google, I'm sorry, via Microsoft Teams. And next, using the text only to answer the following questions. What is the problem being addressed? How is the problem solved? And in the text, the author describes how astronauts eat in space. If you had to eat in space, what do you think, um, what do you think would be challenging about it? And for this last third one, you can also use the video things that you observed or noticed in the video to help you answer um, this third question along with text evidence. All right, friends, um, reach out to me if you need any help, and I look forward to hearing from you um, this upcoming week. Bye, guys.